now on Coast TV News. Milford Police Expansion, how the proposed staff increase in Milford's Police Department could impact your safety and your wallet. The debate over property tax hikes and the urgent need for more officers and dispatchers in light of the new police building. Lewis Canal in limbo. The delay in Lewis Canal dredging raises concerns for local businesses and recreational users. The implications of this prolonged project and what it means for the community's economic and environmental health. Rehoboth's Coastal Concerns Rehoboth Beach faces crucial decisions on beach nourishment and funding, the significance of the DENREC study and how it could shape the future of Delaware's cherished shorelines. This is Coast TV News at 6. Milford now has a bigger and better police station but needs more staff to fill it. Good evening. I'm Madeline Overturf. And I'm Mallory Metzner. Charlie Sakaitis has the night off. Welcome to our news at 6. We begin tonight with the police chief's request for four additional dispatchers and a crime analyst. This comes as a result of staffing needs assessment that police chief Cecilia Ash began conducting shortly after she was hired last year. But more personnel requires more money. Coast TV's Tori Seagraves shows us how this decision could mean another property tax increase. The new Milford Police Department is now up and running, but the police say they are running short on dispatchers. Positions that the city's finance committee says could ultimately lead to more funding from another property tax increase. Emily Crosser says anything to support the local police. And there is crime moving in, so the good thing is that if they get more staffing, especially um, crime analysis and more dispatchers, they'll be able to help whoever calls faster and be able to keep everything in-house to be able to help the people of Milford. Police Chief Ash says many calls for help in Milford come directly to the station as opposed to dialing 911. She says this culture is good but comes with a need for more staff. However, Emmett Vanette, who owns three properties in the city, says the proposed over 5% increase in property taxes is too much too soon. We just spent $19 million on the station and so the taxpayers already ante anteed up some to give the police support. So it's a little disappointing that we have to come back and ask for more operational support. But Police Chief Ash hopes to find other solutions to funding the positions without a tax hike. I feel confident that we can put stopgap measures in with two of the dispatchers to address the current issues within communications and that's just where we have to be really creative in their scheduling. Two of the dispatcher positions are expected to be discussed at the city council meeting on January 8th and the other two dispatcher positions as well as the crime analyst position are expected to be discussed at future budget hearing meetings in the spring. I'm Tori Seagraves in Milford, Coast TV News. This brings us to our Coast TV poll. We want to know from you, is the new police building effective without adequate staffing, as some say it has? Let's take a look at the updated results from earlier tonight. It's been switching back and forth now. 54% say no, it is not going to be effective, aka what's the point of having a new building without enough people to work it, but 46% say yes, they think it's doing its duty that way. That's right, and if you haven't voted yet, you still can at coasttv.com or on our mobile app. We'll have updated results again later tonight. The Georgetown Planning Commission is inviting people for public input on key zoning changes. The commission will focus on three major ordinances. Retail marijuana establishments for selling, manufacturing, and testing will be considered in specific commercial and industrial districts. At Georgetown's council meeting in November, the possibility of allowing marijuana businesses such as dispensaries and cultivation centers centers within town limits were discussed, but an ordinance would not allow for more than two marijuana dispensaries in town limits. It will also limit marijuana cultivation centers, testing centers, and manufacturing centers to one each. The public hearing is set for January 17th. The Daisy family is looking to renovate another home in Lewis. You might recall last year, the family faced pushback on their plans to demolish its dated and once renovated family property with the city citing historic district code. The Daisies felt the renovations in the 90s negated that historical value. According to the city, the home located here is on Coleman Avenue. The city says the request has been made by Darnell and Daryl Daisy. The Historic Preservation Architectural Review Commission 
is looking to see if the family can renovate the home or if they need to schedule a public hearing for that. That is set for Thursday at 6 to discuss the historical status of the property. If you live in Milton, mark your calendar. On February 3rd, the town will hold a special referendum to decide on incorporating approximately 50 acres of land between Shingle Point Road and Harbison Road. Voting takes place at the Milton Fire Department from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Homeowners and non-resident property owners are eligible to vote. But remember, it's one vote per person or entity. If you can't make it, absentee ballots are available until February 2nd. Ocean City's mayor and city council are calling for proposals from qualified vendors for the Convention Center Life Safety Improvements Project. The project will add safety upgrades to the Convention Center. The town says interested parties can obtain bid documents from the town's procurement department. A key pre-bid meeting is scheduled for January 25th with a site walkthrough to follow. Final bids are due February 26th. DENREC has opened a public comment period for the cleanup proposal of the Broadkiln Sportsman's Club located in Prime Hook near the intersection of Deep Branch Road and Route 1. The site historically operated as a shooting range. According to DENREC, the site is undergoing soil excavation to reduce lead contamination. Future use of the site will be restricted to non-residential purposes with limitations on groundwater usage. Public comments are accepted until January 9th. The City of Milford's annual municipal election is set for April 27th. The election is from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This important vote will decide the Office of Mayor and Council Persons for a two-year term beginning May 6th. Deadline to file for Mayor and City Council is February 27th at 4.30. For those looking to participate, voter registration through the State of Delaware ends March 28th. We're taking a live look right now into Rehoboth Beach. A beautiful, chilly, darn cold night out there. I don't even think it's chilly. Our first alert meteorologist Alex Seymour joins us in for Paul. Paul, I mean, Alex, do you agree? I think it's past chilly at this point. Yeah, I think it's past chilly this evening, especially considering what we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks. We haven't really seen that much cold air. So when we're down into the 20 and into the 30s and then we're heading down into the 20s during the overnight hours, it's going to feel pretty cold out there. You certainly want to bundle up as you, if you're spending any time outside this evening. Boardwalk Plaza Hotel camera in Rehoboth Beach this evening, even right on the beach, it's currently sitting at 35 degrees this evening. And that's Kind of where we're at all across Delmarva. In the mid-30s, few of us already down in the low 30s. 33 in Ocean Pines, it's 37 in Bethany Beach, 34 in Milton, 39 degrees currently in Millsboro this evening. Those temps going to continue to quickly fall. We have calm winds and we have clear skies. That's just conducive for all that heat, that daytime heat, just kind of evaporate away. So we're going to see those temps really start to tumble. So our dog walking forecast for this evening, we're talking about temps climb falling, I should say, down to around freezing by 8 p.m. And then by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, expect temps in the upper 20s. Thank you, Alex. Delaware State Police have arrested a Laurel woman on hate crime charges. Police say this happened at a restaurant called Taco Chabalita on Route 13 following disorderly conduct over a food order on December 29th. Troopers say 21-year-old Ayanna Winstead allegedly made threatening and racially charged statements during a phone call to the restaurant staff. They say Winstead, along with a family member involved, were arrested December 31st. Police say she was charged and then released on her own recognizance. Attention OC Beach Bus Riders, the current Translock bus tracking service will stop functioning this month. But don't worry, a brand new Beach Bus app is on its way, set for release in February for both Android and Apple devices, along with a new web-based tracking option. The town apologizes for any inconvenience during this transition period and says it's working diligently to minimize service disruptions. Exciting changes are coming to public transportation in the first state. A comprehensive transit study by DART is set to wrap up soon. According to the Department of Transportation, feedback from statewide workshops on the reimagined network has been overwhelmingly positive. The department says 75 percent believe the study will improve current DART services. The final report and implementation plan for the DART reimagined study are expected later this month. And good news for DART in Georgetown. The Delaware Transportation Corporation has just received approval to upgrade that existing transit hub. The renovation plan promises 
ADA compliant boarding areas, enhanced drainage, security upgrades, and real-time bus information displays. Despite current legal and environmental discussions with the property owner Norfolk Southern, the corporation says it's committed to advancing the project for the community. Staying on the topic of Delaware Transit Corporation, an over $5 million grant is set to help transform the Rehoboth Park and Ride into a cutting-edge, eco-friendly transportation hub. According to the Department of Transportation, this upgrade includes a new passenger canopy with real-time info displays, a sustainable microgrid powered by solar energy, public EV charging stations, and an electric bus facility. Improvements also include improved pedestrian and bike access, extra parking, and a better site layout. Efforts to help beach nourishment projects along the coast, Rehoboth Beach will discuss a DENREC study that explores the economic benefits of beach nourishment and seeks new ways to fund those big projects. The organization says new ways to fund is needed due to rising costs and the increased demand for replenishment. One store worker in Rehoboth says nourishment is needed to keep the community growing. Beach nourishment attracts more people. If you have a cleaner area, it's going to be more attractive to come here. The idea is going to be more attractive to come here. Denrec says there will be a public meeting for people to attend and give their input on that study. That's January 18th. And we have a lot more news to get to this evening. Delta announces early closures of the Woodland Ferry once again when to avoid this route. We're dry for the next 24 hours, but a lot of rain is in the forecast over the next week. I'll have your rainy forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But first, the Lewis Rehoboth Canal dredging completion pushed back. We have that story when we're back in just 60 seconds. 30 years ago, a historic ice storm knocked out power for 10 days. Trees fell across power lines and ice snapped utility poles. Our Delaware Electric Cooperative team worked around the clock to help those we serve. Three decades later, we've applied the lessons we learned during the storm to make our grid stronger. Through the dedication of our employees, co-op power has never been more reliable. And while the weather is unpredictable, DEC's commitment to doing what's best for our members will never change. Oh, porches. Hello, aren't you the guy I see on TV, the porch protection guy? Yeah, I so would say. So they're made of marine grade materials that last for years? Yeah, I would And they say I could use my porch all year round? I think and so. And they keep the dirt pollen and rain and wind out? And, and the custom made right here locally? They are. I got to run, but it was really nice talking to you. Well, it was nice talking to you too. Call or visit porchprotection.com for your free quote. This is Coast TV News at 6. The Lewis Rehoboth Canal dredging is being delayed. The dredging started back in October. The project was supposed to be complete by the end of December, but now it won't be done until the end of January. While some are worries, worried about the possibility of this affecting the fishing season in the spring, others aren't as concerned. It could be a good thing for the canal fishing. You know, it would stir it up a little bit, maybe. Uh... Maybe we'll get some new growth in there. I, I have an idea it's not going to affect the fishing in the canal at all. The dredging will be happening every day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The hope is that the project will now be completed by the end of January. DelDOT has announced the early closure of the Woodland Ferry later this week. On both Wednesday and Thursday, January 3rd and 4th, the ferry will close for the day at 11.30 a.m. North Street between Liberty Street and Wolford Street will be closed. The city of Seaford says work is taking place Monday, January 8th through the 12th. It's a daily closure from 6.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. A contractor for the city will be working on the storm water system. Well, DeMarva will be looking forward to several chances of wet weather over the next week. I'll be tracking all those storms coming up just after the break. Right now at Ashley, get 0% interest for 60 months on select best-selling mattresses. And visit your local Ashley store to experience our test rest and learn about savings options throughout the store with qualifying mattress purchases. Visit your local Ashley store or ashley.com today. Have you bought a house in the last decade, but it's just not quite big enough? At Paul Davis, we can design and build you a brand new addition or remodel your whole home from start to finish. With over 50 years experience of building and restoring homes, we've made the process quick and easy while making it affordable. 
Call Paul Davis today and one of our design consultants can be at your home as soon as tomorrow to give you a free estimate for your new addition or whole home remodel. Or visit our new showroom in Salisbury, Maryland, 100 Marvel Road. From empty nester to first home, Accessible Home Builders does it all. It was great working with Scott at Accessible Builders. He called us every Monday and asked us to come over to the house at each step of the way during the construction of our home. It was pretty unique working with Scott because not only is he the owner, but he was working in here hands-on with his employees and really just trying to make our vision come to life. Design your dream home with Accessible Home Builders. Have fun and enjoy Delmarva's Coast with Petey the Peacock. Coast TV's feathered friend and sharing joy coastwide. Know where he's going to be next and get his free coloring book at PeteyThePeacock.com. Brought to you by Tidal Health. One oh two five W B O C. Right now at Ashley, get zero percent interest for sixty months on select best-selling mattresses, and visit your local Ashley store to experience our test rest and learn about savings options throughout the store with qualifying mattress purchases. Visit your local Ashley store or Ashley.com today. Start your new year off right with a new bathroom from Coastal Bath, the only Bath Planet dealer on Delmarva with the Good Housekeeping Seal two-year money-back guarantee. It's our annual New Year savings. Take $2,024 off your new bathroom project and no payments and no interest until 2025. How do I like the new bath? I love it. My wife loves it. I highly recommend Coastal Bath. They do an awesome job. Local and family owned. Call Coastal Bath today. The Today Show, weekdays at 7 on Coast TV. Well, it's a chilly or even somewhat cold evening here along the coast as we take a live look out on Orsted camera in West Ocean City. Clear skies, calm winds, quiet evening out there. Temps down to 39 degrees in West Ocean City. That's actually one of the warmest locations on Delmarva this evening. We're going to be falling down in the 20s overnight. At least we're going to stay dry though. Live radar, no rain to speak of this evening. Much different than 24 hours ago when we were dealing with that drizzly weather passing through the area. And there's not any weather that's going to be impactful over the next 24 hours. Pretty quiet conditions across the region as high pressure is in control. That changes though as we head throughout the next few days. But tomorrow morning, the big thing is just going to be those temps down in the upper 20s to close to 30 degrees right around freezing. You're going to want to bundle up and with clear skies, calm winds overnight, we're likely going to deal with some of that frost on those windshields so give yourself some extra time for that morning commute on Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon a little bit warmer than today but still mainly sunny. Temps climbing up into the mid to upper 40s. Not a bad day overall. Clouds though increase as we head towards Thursday. Thursday is looking like a pretty dreary at least first half of the day with clouds and a spotty shower too. Maybe even a snow flurry passing through the region. That clears out though as we head into the afternoon hours. We're going to actually see some pretty chilly temps start to coming to the area Thursday into Friday. That is leading up to a storm system as we head into the weekend. Unfortunately, if you like winter weather, that cold air is not going to stay sustained across the region. We're actually going to see as this area of low pressure moves north towards the area, we're going to get strong southeasterly to easterly winds. That is going to push a lot of warm air into the area. So we're expecting rain and wind across the region as we head into Saturday and Sunday. Pretty significant snowstorm though if you're heading off to the other side of the bay. I-95 corridor and to the north and west going to be impacted by that snow and then also north of Philadelphia. Maybe even getting into Philadelphia and parts of northern Delaware some of that snow. But here in Delmarva, rain, wind, also coastal issues because easterly winds going to push a lot of water to the shore. That's not the only storm system we've got to be worried about though. We have another area of low pressure huge area of low pressure that's going to be passing across the eastern United States as we head towards Tuesday. This couple with a high pressure off to our north and east going to bring a strong surge of easterly winds. We're likely going to see wind gusts early next week to on Tuesday, 40, 50, maybe even higher off the ocean. That couple with a weekend storm pushing water towards the shoreline, we could be dealing with some pretty significant coastal issues next week. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that. That would be coastal flooding and beach erosion here along the coast. Also a lot of rain with two storm systems. We're likely going to be picking up several inches of rain over the next seven days. And that's not the only weather we've got to be talking about because that stormy weather pattern, that's going to be continuing for the next several weeks. Our Paul Davis restoration and home remodeling seven day forecast. At least we're dry through Friday. 
It is going to get chilly though, 38 degrees for that high on Friday. W rainy and windy on Saturday and Sunday, and then more rain and wind by next Tuesday. People living in Salisbury, mark your calendars for January 8th. That's when the Department of Field Operations will be collecting Christmas trees curbside. To schedule your tree pickup, call the department during business hours or make an online request after hours. Remember, trees should be unbagged and free of decorations for composting. Please don't use trash or recycle bins for disposal. This initiative is part of the city's commitment to a cleaner, sustainable Salisbury. Staying in Salisbury, important infrastructure work is scheduled tomorrow. The city's Waterworks Utilities Division will repair a fire hydrant on Marine Road from Elgood Street to Parsons Road. This means Marine Road will be closed to all traffic, including emergency vehicles, from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Additionally, water supply will be temporarily shut off in the area during the repair. People are advised to exercise caution near the work site. The Produce Safety Water Systems Workshop is being held February 14th from 8 to 4.30 at the Delaware State Fair. The Department of Agriculture says the workshop will take place in the Ag Commodities Building next to the Kent Barn. During the workshop, you'll learn about common water systems on produce farms and how they relate to the Food Safety Modernization Act Produce Safety Rule. You'll also have the opportunity to hear from industry experts and engage in hands-on activities. By attending the workshop, you can also receive one pesticides credit. The city of Salisbury is tackling its trash collection delays head on. A new garbage truck and front end loader arriving from Pennsylvania this Friday aims to help boost the city's cleanup efforts. Despite using unconventional methods, including manual can dumping, the city's field operations team says they're working tirelessly to catch up. The city says it's not a quick fix, but a significant step forward. Homeowners are advised to keep updated through official city channels and reach out if their trash isn't collected on schedule. Time to take one more look at our Coast TV poll. We want to know from you, is the Milford Police Building brand new, effective without adequate staff? So far, 65% say yes. This has changed every time we have ran the poll. So please, if you haven't voted yet, you can do that at coasttvnews.com or our mobile app, and we'll have updated results on Coast TV News at 11. The Delmarva Sports Network from the Wawa Studios. Happy New Year, everybody. After a week-long tournament with some of the best basketball in the entire country, we stay on the courts and keep up with the action in the Henlopen Conference. The 2-2 two two Delmar Wildcats is at the 3-4 Sussex Tech Ravens in girls basketball action. For the Ravens, they played two games at the Governor's Challenge Tournament, both against Bayside foes. And Sussex Tech fell to Parkside and Y High. They looked to bounce back tonight, started their first three games out of four in the victory column, and they look back to get to their winning ways against Delmar. For the Wildcats, they most recently fell to Lake Forest, but before those contests, they had back to back wins against Laurel and Salisbury Christian. Highlights of this game will be on the final score tonight at 10.30 p.m. Moving on to college basketball, University of Maryland Eastern Shore men's basketball looks to get off to a hot start to the new year as they take on Clark Summit University. Full game highlights will be on the Delmarva Sports Network tonight at 10.30 p.m. That does it for sports. Have a great night. It's kind of cute that she thinks I don't notice but I really appreciate how she's always looking after me. Sometimes she thinks she's fooling me, but she isn't. Do the boys at work give me grief about my hummus? Oh, you bet. But it's a small price to pay for a woman who cares. Hey, babe. Hey. You're always there for them. Okay, we're all ready. And we're always here for you. Food Lion, here for every moment. Coast TV and the First Alert Weather Team. Your safety, our commitment. I had a pain in my armpit. I found a very large lump. When we got the call back that it seems to be breast cancer, everything kind of crumbled. And you're young and you have a family and you don't know if you're gonna live, you don't know, I mean, you know, you don't know anything. She was one of the patients where we could take cutting edge science and turn right around and apply it to our clinic the very next day. Bay Health is unmatched, I believe. I can't thank them enough, they saved my life. Are you dreaming of the perfect outdoor space where you can relax and entertain? Look no further than DeMarva's most trusted partner, Spicer Brothers. 
We pride ourselves on superior craftsmanship and only use the finest materials to create beautiful, durable decks. From classic wooden decks to low maintenance PVC materials, we have the perfect solution for you. And right now, get a free Green Mountain Grill with your new deck. Plus, enjoy 0% financing with no payments and no interest for 18 months. Spicer Brothers, turning homeowners' dreams into reality for over 20 years. There's a psycho in my head. The Beach. It's time to experience an extraordinary lineup of entertainment at the Ocean City Performing Arts Center. Enjoy performances by the Four Phantoms in concert on February 4th, Wheel of Fortune Live on February 29th, The Simon and Garfunkel Story March 18th, and The Price is Right Live on April 1st. The excitement is building, and now it's your turn to be a part of it. Secure your seats at ococean.com slash pack and join us for the most amazing season yet. Don't miss out. Come experience the magic of live performances all in one place at the Ocean City Performing Arts Center. See you there. WRDE First Alert Weather, brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. Here's something fun to do Friday if you don't have any plans. There's a stargazing and bonfire event at Holtz Landing next Friday, I should say. Winter skies offer the best stargazing, free from the glare of resort town lights. Delaware State Parks staff will be there to guide visitors through the stars, helping identify constellations and the North Star, while sharing ancient stories behind the celestial wonders. No pre-registration is needed and it's absolutely free. We've got those clear skies this evening across Delmarva. It's pretty quiet conditions overall as they take a live look out on a Hershey Exteriors camera at the 45th Street Tap House in Ocean City. Temps, though, pretty chilly, sitting right around 39 degrees. We're going to be falling down into the upper 20s to low 30s tomorrow morning, so you do want to bundle up. Tomorrow afternoon, though, climbing up into the mid to upper 40s. We stay on the cooler side of things the next couple of days. Downright chilly on Friday. Temps only climbing up to 38. Rain and wind on the way for this weekend, and then another significant rain event, rain and wind event next. Tuesday. Thanks for joining us here for Coast TV News at 6. For more news and local weather, download our Coast TV News app. The NBC Nightly News is up next. We'll see you later tonight for Coast TV News at 11. Have a great evening.